Hey everyone, so you've heard me talk about Mara Jade a couple times here on the channel. Actually, more than a couple times. She's definitely one of my more favorite characters, and the fact that she's Luke's wife, but used to be the Emperor's hand, is even more cool and more of a story that I want to dive into and explain to you all. So there's been a lot of changes to Star Wars since Disney took over, which resulted in the separation of the new canon from the old extended universe, which is now called Legends. Some changes have been pretty minor, while some have been huge. One of the big ones was getting rid of Luke Skywalker's wife, Mara Jade Skywalker. Now, Mara Jade is basically someone who has done it all. She was a personal assassin for the Emperor during the days of the Empire, a smuggler that even Han Solo was impressed with, and a Jedi Master alongside her husband, Luke Skywalker. Basically, there wasn't anything she didn't do. So who was this woman and why was she so awesome? Mara, or Mara for some people, was born shortly after Order 66 and was taken from her parents by Emperor Palpatine so he could train her in the Force. Palpatine basically did what the Jedi do in this case where they take kids and train them to be Jedi. That's what happened to Mace, it's what happened to a lot of other Jedi but this time Palpatine did it. To Imperial officials, she was nothing but a palace dancer, but to Palpatine, she was an agent of the Empire, strong in the dark side. Along with training with the Emperor, she trained alongside the Imperial Royal Guard and became very adept in covert espionage and assassination skills by the age of 14. In a final test of her training, she had to break into Grand Moff Tarkin's personal living quarters to steal something from his safe. When guards came to arrest her, she successfully fought them off off with her blaster and the amethyst lightsaber that Palpatine had given her. She did such a good job that Vader and Sidious appointed her to be an Emperor's Hand, a member of an elite group of assassins and spies that answered directly to Sidious and Vader themselves. She carried out their orders on a variety of worlds, eliminating corrupt Imperial officer traitors and any others who the Empire wanted taken care of. She was kind of like a really cool hitman. She was so strong in the Force that she could hear Palpatine's voice any anywhere in the galaxy with a telepathic link. Her skills were so good that she also helped hunt down Jedi that survived Order 66. After the destruction of the first Death Star, the Emperor commanded her to spy on Lord Vader and observe his activities, in part as a way to keep an eye on him after his failure to protect the Death Star. During this time as Vader went on missions and continued to be awesome, she became envious of the Dark Lord and sensed a division in him. A division that she had no idea was being caused by Vader, knowing about his parentage of the young Jedi named Luke Skywalker. In sensing this division within Vader, Mera hoped that Vader would betray the Emperor so that she could kill him and take his place as the Emperor's apprentice. Throughout these years between Yavin and Endor, Mara continued to perform a wide range of missions for both the Emperor and Vader. There are a ton that I won't go over, but needless to say, she's pretty sweet and holds her own just fine against anyone who comes against her. She even uses her own group of renegade stormtroopers called the Hand of Judgment who perform vigilante tasks for her. A few months before the Battle of Endor, Mara Jade received a mission from the Emperor that would change the course of her life. The Emperor sent her to Jabba's palace to pose as a dancer and wait for Luke Skywalker's arrival. Another servant there suspected that Mara was there to kill Jabba, which made her have to flee into a ventilation shaft where she witnessed Luke kill the Rancor. Afterwards, she escaped and begged Jabba to let her go with them to the Dune Sea. But the illustrious Jabba sensed that she was trying to use a Jedi mind trick on him, so he forced her to leave the palace via landspeeder and never come back. So she failed her mission and had to return to Coruscant and a very displeased Palpatine. Years later, Luke had a vision where he saw that if Mara were there at the Sarlacc pit, he would not have escaped from Jabba. The Emperor soon gave her another assassination mission, which took her far away from the Battle of Endor. During the battle, Mara telepathically sent a message to the Emperor when she suddenly saw Palpatine's point of view and saw him getting thrown down the shaft by Vader next to Luke and heard the Emperor's last command screaming in her mind. You will kill Luke Skywalker. She then experienced the pain of his death and was knocked unconscious by the pain for days. For the next few days, Mara hated Luke more than the power of a thousand Death Stars for killing her mentor and master. Little did she know though, that because she received the Emperor's last command through the Force, it had an even greater impact on her and infiltrated her mind even more. She became obsessed with killing Luke 
But now that the emperor was gone, she didn't have any of the resources she once enjoyed as an emperor's hand. Mara was forced to basically get a real job, but an ex-assassin's skills are not the stuff for a respectable resume. So she became a smuggler. It was during these years she lost her amethyst lightsaber that Palpatine had given her, and her abilities in the Force began to go dormant. About four years after the Battle of Endor, after Episode 6, Mara joined the Talon Card smuggling organization. She was very good at her job and eventually rose through the ranks to become his number two. If you don't know who Talon Card is, definitely check him out. He's like a respectable Han Solo that doesn't mess around at all. So back to Mara, finally she and Card happened to be across a stranded Luke Skywalker in the middle of space. Mara wanted to kill him, but Card took him captive to either sell him to the Empire or the New Republic. While Luke was their prisoner, Grand Admiral Thrawn came to the planet they were on to harvest creatures there that had a natural ability to block the force around them. Because of these creatures, Luke is basically powerless there and uses the battery of his robotic hand to power open his cell door. He steals a craft and flies into the jungle. Mara goes after him, and when they crash land in the middle of the trees, unfortunately for them though, the force blocking creatures are everywhere, so they can't use the force and they have to work together to survive against the dangerous creatures of the jungle. Mara promises to kill him when they get out, but until then, they need each other to stay alive. Luckily for Luke, he escapes the planet with Han and Lando's help before she can do that. But something has changed within Mara. The dormant force inside of her reawakens and she feels a connection to it again. As the story goes on, a bunch more stuff happens between Luke and Mara, but let's jump to when Mara discovers that Thrawn has joined the Joris Sabaoth, a dark side clone of a Jedi Master from the days of the Republic, to take over the galaxy with a clone army. Unfortunately for Luke, this same Joris Sabaoth is training him in the ways of the force and trying to turn him to the dark side without Luke realizing it. Kind of like Terry Silver in Karate Kid 3. Mara finds Luke and tells him what's going on and the two lead a mission to destroy the Emperor's storehouse, where all the cloning cylinders are. When they get there, Sibaeoth freaks out and unleashes his secret weapon, Luke Skywalker. A clone of the real Luke made from his hand that he lost in Cloud City against Vader. Plus, the clone is wielding Anakin's lightsaber. Definitely this is a cooler story than the story of Anakin's lightsaber in The Force Awakens. Luke would later say that this clone is the fulfillment of his vision in the cave of Dagobah, in that it's what Luke would have been if he had turned to the dark side. So in a seriously epic fight to the death that honestly is one of the best lightsaber fights of all time in the comics, Luke fights his clone while Mera fights insane Master Sibaoth with Leia's lightsaber. Finally, Mera actually kills both Sibaoth and Luke's clone, thus fulfilling Palpatine's last order to kill Luke Skywalker. After the fight, the real Luke gives Mera Anakin's lightsaber as a show of friendship and Mera officially renounces the dark side. From there, Mera begins to train to be a Jedi under the tutelage of Kyle Katarn, who was an ex-stormtrooper turned Jedi. Basically Finn, but way cooler. She prevented him from turning to the dark side and grew immensely as a Jedi in the Force. That experience proved to be monumental for her because later the Emperor came back in his cloned body. He reached out to her and tried to get her to join him, but Mera refused, so the Emperor captured her. Fortunately, her master freed her before fake Palpatine could kill her. Mera's escapades with Sith returning from the dead didn't end with Sidious. Later, she fought against the spirit of the Sith Lord Exar Kun and was part of the crew that defeated him as well. Mara Jade performed many feats as a Jedi, which would honestly take all day to go through, but some highlights are that she helped destroy a prototype Death Star, kept smuggling with Lando, and even started her own trading company. She wasn't totally dedicated to the Jedi at times because she was disappointed that Luke didn't spend more time training her. Luke, though, finally realizes that he has feelings for her, but their relationship is mostly arguments rather than the awkward Padme and Anakin flirting. Slowly they came together and were even able to join together mentally in perfect coordination whenever they fought an enemy. Finally during a mission when certain death was upon them, Luke asked her to marry him and she accepted. Then, like any good man, he puts her in a hibernation trance and pushes her into a raging stream of water so they could escape the danger that they were in. The two later married in a wedding that the press landed as the ultimate symbol of Imperial and New Republic unity. They began to train even more Jedi, and Mera finally left the life of a smuggler and dedicated herself to Luke and the Jedi Order. Once she becomes a Jedi Knight, Mera takes on Jaina Solo, Han and Leia's daughter in Legends, as her apprentice. During this time, the infamous Yuuzhan Vong began encroaching the galaxy. If you don't know who the Yuuzhan Vong are, then you're missing out on the greatest villains of Star Wars, pretty 
pretty much, at least in Legends. They are a race that came from outside the galaxy using technology that was genetically engineered and organic rather than mechanical. Their invasion of the galaxy would result in the deaths of nearly 365 trillion sentient beings. Thanos who? As the Yuuzhan Vong invaded, Mera began getting sick, but no one could pinpoint what was causing her illness. She saved him from a deadly Yuuzhan Vong trap, but the illness worsened and eventually became so bad that she couldn't even attend Chewbacca's funeral when he died. After the funeral, some Yuuzhan spies defected to the New Republic and revealed that their species had sent deadly comb spores through the galaxy to weaken it in preparation for their invasion, and Mara Jade had contracted them. The comb spores were a bioweapon that could break down its victim's molecular structure. Normally it killed within a few days, but Mara used the power of the Force to survive much longer. Even though she was so sick, she could basically kill anyone she came in contact with. Finally, Luke and Mara knew what was affecting her. And it turns out, coolly or lamely enough, that one of the Yuuzhan Vong's tears contained the antidote for Mera. So there's that. They just had to you know, peel some onions. During the war with the Yuuzhan Vong, Luke and Mera have a son, which they named Ben Skywalker, who the Yuuzhan Vong later kidnapped during the Yuuzhan Vong's invasion of Coruscant. Luckily for little Kylo, I mean Ben, Uncle Lando saves the day and rescues him. After that scare, Luke and Mera have Jason Solo. Ben's older cousin. He takes care of Ben to protect them. Mera continues throughout various adventures of being a Jedi and beyond the defeat of the Yuuzhan Vong. One of the things that stands out most to me is that she was there when Luke saw R2-D2's Ditch's recording of Anakin strangling Padme. I bet that was probably really awkward. Anyways, Jason Solo actually thought that Anakin acted reasonably in the situation and the kid began to turn to the dark side, which really wasn't good when Mera found out since Jason was so close to Ben. So in the showdown of the year, Mera confronts Jason and the two start an epic battle royale until Mera Jade is about to finish Jason off when Jason stares into her eyes and instantly creates the illusion of Ben's face beneath her. He does this by using the Force, causing Jade Skywalker to hesitate for a split second. Jason uses the time to stab a poison dart into her thigh, causing a slow, paralyzing, and painless death. Her final words expressed her belief that Jason had become worse, more vile and cruel than Palpatine, and that Luke would defeat and strike him down. Mera left her body behind instead of allowing it to become one with the Force to leave evidence of the identity of her killer, as well as to give her family something to say goodbye to. Her last uses of the Force were to whisper in Ben's mind and to ruffle Skywalker's hair. Her body would eventually become one with the Force during her funeral. So what happens to Jason? Does Luke ever find out who killed his wife? Well, stay tuned for the next video of Star Wars Theory. No, I'm just kidding. Luke, of course, finds out that Jason killed her, but Luke rejects the idea of revenge and decides not to pursue him. But that didn't mean Jason's twin sister, Jaina, would do the same. She ends up killing him and avenging her former master. So that's the story and life of Mary Jade Skywalker, or at least, you know, a good chunk of it. There's so much more to her life as, you know, it's covered in dozens of books, but I can't really possibly cover everything in just one video. Well, I could, but it would just take hours and hours and I don't really know if you'd all sit through that. If you're still here watching this video, you're a real one, hit like, leave a comment below that you're still here at the end. Uh, you know, Mera's such a great character. She was a hardened assassin, but became an extremely compassionate individual with a remarkable ability to resist the power of the dark side when she eventually swore it off. She was a talented slicer, pilot, spy, Jedi master, and mother. And above all, a great wife to Luke. So what is your favorite Mara Jade moment? Was there something that I left out that you'd like for me to cover? And more importantly, would you like to see Luke have a wife like Mara Jade in the new canon? It would change a lot of things and may not even be possible now after The Last Jedi, but they could of course, you know, go back in time or maybe <laughs> unless Ben killed her or something during his fall. That's actually a pretty interesting theory. Maybe, maybe that happened. Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching this video. I love you all. Have a great day and I will see you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always. Fulfill your destiny.